In this video, we are talking all about the cost of living in San Diego, California. We are going to be breaking it all down. The housing, the taxes, the food, the utilities, what it really costs to live in San Diego. And we're getting after it right now. What's up, amazing people? I am Liz LaFour here with the Mortgage List team out of San Diego, California. And on this channel, all we talk about is what it's like to live, eat, sleep, and play here in San Diego, California. And talk about the best home loans that work for you and your family. So if this is the channel of what you're looking for, you definitely need it. Hit that subscribe button, click that little bell to make sure that you get reminded every single time we release a new video because we do that every single week. And honestly, my team and I are receiving phone calls and text messages every single day with people just like you that are thinking about or relocating to San Diego, California. And we love getting those phone calls with the opportunity to be able to help those families that are relocating here. And so if you're thinking about that move, make sure that you give us a call, send us a text message, or even send us an email, whatever is easiest for you to be able to reach out to us so we can help you make that move the easiest for you and your family. We got your back when moving to San Diego, California. All right, so let's talk about it. Cost of living in San Diego, California. So you know and I know it's not the cheapest place to live. And truly, it's actually kind of one of the most expensive places. It is the 13th most expensive location to live in the US. So they don't call it a sunshine tax for nothing. So here in San Diego, we pay that sunshine tax. And that's the reason we are the number 13 on the national list of being the most expensive or one of the most expensive places to live here in the US. So first on our list is gonna be housing. And on housing, we're gonna be talking about home prices first. So the average house here in San Diego is gonna be about 645,000. Keep in mind that depending on the area, depending on the city, out of the county of San Diego, 645,000 could be high, it could be low. So on 645, we're talking about the San Diego area. On the flip side, we're gonna be talking about the condos or townhomes, which we're looking more as to the middle 400 range, about 425,000 for a condo. When you're looking at the different areas within, let's say, Carlsbad, to Escondido, to San Diego, to Chula Vista, you're gonna notice that the prices are very different. With that being said, that's the reason why that 645,000 is the average of the total areas. And even during this COVID pandemic time that we've been going through in 2020, values are still rising. And they've been rising about 4.6% through this time frame that we're going through the last year. In the last 10 years, our appreciation of our homes here in San Diego have gone up over 55% which is a very big appreciation, but keep in mind that our homes 10 years ago are definitely not the prices of where they are today. So now let's talk about renting. So renting in San Diego for a three bedroom home is going to run about $3,000. However, when you look at a four bedroom home, it's gonna be about $3,700, which is where it can actually increase quite a bit. When we start looking at the different cities though, depending on a city, this can get really expensive. So we looked up Carlsbad. Carlsbad actually starts at $3,000 a month for a three bedroom, and then goes up to north of $4,000 actually in a four bedroom for Carlsbad. But again, depending on the area, it can get really costly depending on the city. So for example, in the county of San Diego, in Carlsbad, we're looking at a three bedroom home that's going to be about $3,700, which is the average of a four bedroom in San Diego. And then when you look at a four bedroom in Carlsbad, we're talking at $4,538 for a four bedroom. So again, in Carlsbad, of course, you're gonna be closer to the water, so it is gonna be a bit more expensive, but it gives you an average as to what to expect. And then last but not least, let's compare it to another city, so like Escondido. Escondido at a three bedroom, you're looking at 2458. On the flip side, you do four bedrooms, and now you're looking at $3,018 per month for a four bedroom in Escondido. So you can see definitely within the miles from one city to the other, how much less or more expensive that rent can be. Well, the house prices are the same exact way. So on to our next item on the cost of living, it's gonna be utilities. So if you're moving here to San Diego, California, you're gonna to wanna to know what your gas, electric, water, and garbage all are gonna cost you. 
So I would say an average of that is gonna be about $250 to $300 a month for a house here in San Diego, California. Keep in mind that for myself here in San Diego, we have solar in our home and we also have a pool and so it's kind of offsetted. So my bills for gas and electric may be a lot less than your bill when you do not have, let's say solar or not have a pool. So for example, here in our home, we're located here in Escondido. In our home, we actually have our um, gas and electric that includes the solar. So it's actually only about a hundred bucks a month and that's including the gas. And that just has to do with because of our solar. So our solar, the way that we built it was overbuilt. A lot of the time when people end up getting solar, they end up just building it for the average of the last 12 months that they actually had a, like a regular utility bill. The problem with that is that you know and I know that anytime you add solar, you think that, hey, I'm gonna crank it up, right? I'm gonna use the AC, turn on my computer, use all the electricity that I want, but we didn't build our solar for that. And the problem with that is that you end up thinking that you're gonna end up having no bill and you get your solar installed in your house and it turns out that ends up costing you way more money than was expected and when you were not expecting a bill, now you have a bill. So it's just something that you need to expect when it comes to solar. Other thing to know is that solar is actually really common in California um, and you actually will find a lot of electric vehicles as well within clients also that have solar. So then we go back to our garbage and water bill. So that is actually included in for myself. We do have extra trash cans. And so for whatever reason, the extra trash cans cost more money. And so because we have, I think four or five trash cans, yes, we have a lot of trash. Um, that's the reason that why our bill plus the water and it, it actually um, auto fills on our pool in the back. That's the reason why our water and gas is actually closer to about 150 to about 190, um, just depending on what time of the year it is. And then also depending on how much autofill we need to do, because obviously the water needs to get refilled throughout the day if it ends up evaporating. So comparing that actually, let's say to somebody that does not have solar, does not have a pool that has a heater and then doesn't use AC. Well, that's my mom. So my mom doesn't have a um, AC that she doesn't use and she also doesn't have a heated pool and she does not have solar. So in her case, her total bills without all the extras is actually under 200 bucks. And so for her, this is actually a really low payment. And so then she'll come back and complain to me, daughter, my bill is an extra $10. And I'm talking like 10 bucks, like really mom. But that's something that may or may not apply to you. If in fact, that maybe you don't have solar or you don't have a heated pool, or maybe you don't have an AC. It's like all those extra things that you're running that may not need to be uh, paid for at that point. So on to our next topic when it comes to the cost of living, and that's gonna be transportation. So here in San Diego, let's be real, we have like 80% of the population actually has their own car. So we don't really walk to a lot of places. I mean, from here to the San Diego Zoo, you're not gonna walk there. Here to the Wild Animal Park, also not gonna walk there. Realistically, even from here to the park, <laughs> I'm not walking there. I'm gonna get in my car and I'm gonna take that around. And so with that, you're gonna see that gas prices actually national average are at $2.89. Well. Here in San Diego, they're a lot more expensive. And I'm talking like $4.09. If you shop around or you find that cheapest pump, of course you can find it like 15 and 20 cents lower than that. But it is, you know, an average of what you see here in San Diego. And of course, different cities, different areas, you're gonna have different prices when it comes to gas. So let's say that you don't want to use your car. Well, you also have the option of taking the transit, so the bus, which is going to cost you about $70 a year for that pass. Um, on the flip side, you can take the transit, which will take you along the coast, which is $2 a ride. Just gives you a couple different options. Um, and then of course, you always have the Uber and the Lyft as an other option to be able to get from one location to another. Okay, so on to the next item when it comes to the cost of living, and that's gonna be the cost of food. So just like anywhere else, really cost of food is gonna be per person about $15 per person. Um, keep in mind that depending on how big or small your family, that can get really expensive. 
Um, so I know that for me and my family, we don't like to eat out that much because it's me, my husband, and my two girls, and my girls eat a lot. So I mean, like that can get really expensive. Um, I would say stay at home and also eat um, the food that you actually buy from the grocery store and then just like cook at home. Um, that is like great advice, uh, but I don't cook. And so I am not the chef, that's gonna be my husband. And truly, if it wasn't for my husband, I'd probably starve, um, just being completely honest, um, because he is truly the chef. He can look at a show and just like remake that whole thing, um, not write anything down. And I just don't, that's just not me. Um, but my girls will tell you that I make some killer quesadillas, hot dogs, corn dogs. And you know, my husband taught me how to make the eggs. So like I said, not my cup of tea. So I do order out um, when my husband has to work but he does feed us when he has to go on a fishing trip. So you gotta make sure that you plan and prep that food for that week so that way you are not spending so much money at all of the different shops because there are a lot of restaurants here in San Diego and there are some amazing Mexican restaurants and drive throughs that have some yummy burritos and taquitos and ganasada tacos and you name it, it's really good. But because we are located here in San Diego, um, the cost of our fruit and our vegetables most of the time are actually all grown here. And so it ends up being a lot less expensive when you end up going to like Sprouts or Organic and doing like Trader Joe's or Jimbo's and things like that, or even just going to Ralph's and Vaughn's. Like it's really not that expensive when it comes to groceries. I would say when it comes to food for groceries, we probably spend anywhere between $100 to $150 per week. Um, and then of course we got to go to Costco. So I would say Costco is a whole separate trip. Um, every other month we is typically when we end up going and that's typically anywhere between 200 and $300 every other month uh, for Costco that we end up going. We don't go every single um, month for sure. So on to the next actually topic of cost of living is going to be the healthcare. You would think that because everything else is pretty expensive here in San Diego, that healthcare is just as expensive. In fact, we're actually not. We're 15% lower than the national average, which is not common. You would think that we would be like anything else, much more expensive in San Diego, but this is one thing that we are not the highest in. We are in fact the third healthiest city um, in San Diego, according to the national average, according to Wallet Hub. So that's actually a good thing um, that you may end up getting with really low healthcare costs. And then if your husband or wife or spouse ends up being in a union, your insurance is going to be a lot lower. And of course, the insurance within the school districts and a whole bunch of the other different employments that could really bring down the cost of your overall health care, along with co-pays and things like that. And now we're talking about everybody's favorite topic, taxes. So when it comes to San Diego, our sales tax is actually at 7.8%. And then our income tax is a bit higher than that. But sales tax is at 7.8, where the national average is actually at 7.3%. And then we start talking about the income tax. Well, income tax for San Diego is at 9.3%. In comparison to the national average, which is at 4.6%. I mean, like that's a dramatic difference. But again, going back to our sunshine tax, which is the reason why we have so much taxes here in San Diego and in California. We are in fact ranked the 68th most expensive city in the US. So now let's talk about property taxes. So this can also be something that can kind of go up and down depending on the area. So taxes in general are about 1.09% to all the way to 1.19%. However, when you get your home loan, you will find that the majority of your property taxes are set up to 1.25%. The only time that typically you will have something in difference is usually when you have additional Melrose tax. So Melrose tax is additional taxes on top of your regular property taxes, depending on when your home was actually built. So for example, here in my home, we do have Melrose tax because when the home was built in 2007, you had your regular taxes. And then on top of that, you have Melrose tax because when this home was originally built in 2007, there was nothing here. And so we made the school, the streets, the area, all of the little cul-de-sacs, all of that was made with the Melrose tax. So Melrose will, for me, will end up on my home 
for the full 30 years. I've owned my home since 07, so we're in 2020, so that's 13 years. So I still have 17 years left for this Melarose, but I wouldn't choose my home over any other home. I love my house and I love the cul-de-sac. So gotta weigh out the options. Does it make sense? Does it not make sense? But it's really important to know that there are homes that do not have Melarose and then what do the perks come with those property taxes that you have to pay in extra like the Melarus? Does it make sense for you and your family? So on to things to do. When you end up living here in San Diego, what do you do now? So, well here in San Diego, we do have a professional baseball team, the San Diego Padres. And to be able to take your family to one of the games, you can get tickets for as low as $21, which is pretty amazing in comparison to the Cubs tickets. I mean, those tickets are almost 60 bucks at $58 just for one ticket. I mean, you could take two and a half children or two and a half people for that cost here in San Diego. So in that case, our Padres games are actually a lot more affordable. And for us, we are a softball family. So we love some baseball and we love to go watch the Padres game go play. And we love to watch the game of the Padres when they do end up actually playing specifically because the environment that we're currently in. Um, with that being said, let's say you don't like baseball. I mean, the food at the stadium is amazing. I mean, like so, 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 so good. They have the most delicious hamburgers, the truffle fries. I mean, like seriously, you could miss the games just by eating at all the amazing yummy spots that are located within the stadium. So on to the San Diego Zoo. So did you know that at the zoo, you as an adult could come to the zoo for 60 bucks for the whole day? And then to bring one of your kids from the age of three to 11, it would be $50 for them. Here's the ticker. We have annual passes. So we don't just go to the zoo and we don't just go to the wild animal park, technically safari park. So I've lived here in San Diego my whole entire life and it was always the wild animal park, not the safari park. Well, now the annual passes, we actually have the Keepers Club. So the Keepers Club actually is so inexpensive. And so I actually get to go with myself and then I get to bring one additional person that's not in my household and my annual passes are $277 for mine and one other person, whoever it may be. So maybe today I'll take my sister-in-law. Maybe tomorrow I'll take my husband. And then maybe next week I'll take my mom and I'll take my kids. So that is actually really, really low in price and in cost because not only do you get to go to the San Diego Zoo, but you also get to go to the Wild Animal Park slash the Safari Park. Because in those two parks, the Zoo Keepers Club actually covers both of them and it covers the ability of not having to pay for parking. I mean like so for the entire year of not having to pay for parking and for you and one other person and you can flip flop the people that come with you, that is a steal of a deal. And the cost for that is $277. And of course, my kids are a little bit older. So my oldest is nine and a half. My youngest is, oh my gosh, almost eight. And so because of that, of course, I got to pay for their passes. And for their passes, it's $60. So Seriously, $50 for one day, one park, or 60 bucks for both parks for the entire year. I mean, it's a no brainer. $60 for each of them, and then 277 for me and whoever I wanna take on. I mean, literally, you could go to the Safari Park or the Wild Demo Park, which are technically the same place, or you could go to the zoo um, and go on flip-flops throughout the year, and then just kinda go for a couple hours. That's really what we do, and just go see the animals. And then when you're in downtown San Diego, you can actually go to the Balboa Park and check out all of the museums. They have art museums, science museums, they have uh, museums for history. I mean, it's like so many different options. A lot of this stuff is free, so you really don't have to pay for anything, but there are some of those museums that have a really small fee, like 10 to 20 bucks, or if you want an Explorer Pass for the annual fee, it's about $229 for the entire pass and it takes you into almost all of the museums whenever you like. As you can see, we are big annual pass holders because it truly, honestly, it just makes sense that for the ability of just going somewhere, hanging out, whether it's be for the whole day or just part of the day and then just 
go for a couple hours. It just makes sense. With that also being said, there's other places that you could go check out. There's Legoland, there's SeaWorld. I mean like so many places to go that you just have a lot of options. And so why not look at the best options for you and your family to be able to look at the things that you're going to do and then get the annual passes because it's gonna save you a lot of money. Okay, amazing people. So today we were all talking about the cost of living and what it's like and what it truly costs to live here in San Diego, California. And so depending on where you wanna live, whether it's in Carlsbad or in Escondido or it's in downtown San Diego, the cost of living could go higher, it could go lower. It really depends on the area that you're thinking about. We absolutely love getting phone calls and text messages and emails from clients just like you every single day that are looking to move to San Diego, California and make San Diego their new home. So if you have a question about a community or a city or you're curious about what the payment's gonna be, reach out to us. Give us a call, send us a text message or an email, whatever is easiest, just reach out to us. We are available and we will have your back when you're moving to San Diego, California. So until next time, make sure you check out all the new videos that are coming out every single week. Don't forget, subscribe, like, and comment down below. And don't forget, if you are still curious about some of these other programs or these other cities, there's a whole bunch of videos right over here that you definitely need to check out. Until next time, see you later.